I'm Rob Wilson, you're watching C4 Retech, and this is Honest Home Screen Launcher Reviews, suggested by you. Our first suggestion comes from Tuma Gaufman, who says, Try Z Launcher, simple and different. And try it, I will. Z Launcher is developed by Nokia, would you believe? Who? And the home screen is indeed very simple. You effectively have three pages to work with. The home screen are your favourites, while swiping to the right takes you to your widgets, and swiping left takes you to all of your apps, which are alphabetically ordered. On the home screen, you can swipe the clock to get extra bobbins, like calendar reminders, and if you long press on an icon, you can drop it into your dock. Now that's fairly basic stuff, so what drives Z Launcher in a somewhat unique fashion is the gesture board you can use at any time. So if you draw a letter, it instantly searches for appropriate content, like G for the Gmail app. Z Launcher is one of those apps that claims to learn your preferences over time, so that it becomes more intelligent about the results it gives you back with gesture searches. But who needs time when you can search C and 4 and hit the right result you want first time? Boom. So yeah, I agree, Z Launcher is simple and different, but it may take some adjustment for Android fanatics. Vishal Day writes, please try TSF Launcher, best animation and lightweight. Well, here goes. First off, Vishal is spot on with the animations, they're really quite beautiful. Even tapping on this clock is quite addictive. And for absolutely no reason, here's a flying blimp hanging a picture of me wearing a summer hat. Utterly pointless and fantastic at the same time. And TSF Launcher is full of crazy stuff like this. Take the dot for example, you can shrink it down and even make it disappear if you want to, and you can tap on the left side of the screen to bring up another dock of apps, almost like the Samsung Galaxy Edge. As for the desktop itself, where well, you can mess around with the fonts if you wish, and the desktop is almost completely free form, so that you can throw tons of apps onto the screen and make it look a complete mess. Then there's this floating widget that you can use to quickly navigate from one home screen to the next. TSF is full of what I would call off the wall functionality. Some of it is wacky, some of it is funny, and some of it is really quite ingenious, like this lasso tool that lets you highlight a bunch of apps to organise them, like putting them into a folder. Now this launcher is a far cry from material design, which usually ends up being a criticism for Android apps but its own design language is so complete and its functionality so rich that I am prepared to accept it as something completely different. That does mean that this launcher can be a bit overwhelming at first and it took me a good while to discover all the features I've shown you, so there's probably countless more lurking around in the app too. Surprisingly for a third party launcher I didn't spot any bloatware, but one source of revenue stream is the theme section, which can often throw you to the Google Play Store to download and pay for new skins for the launcher. There are some free ones however, such as this cartoon theme. As for the launcher being lightweight, well my OnePlus X didn't miss a beat, and despite all the fancy graphics, all seemed good. Now, before we move on to our next launcher, it's time for a C4 eTech special announcement. Okay, just to put this rumour to bed with some conclusive evidence, I am not Iron Robin. Baraf Tija was quite direct when he shouted 360 launcher at me, but I admire his bluntness, so here goes. First, let's get the negatives out of the way. I know some of you are going to complain about that cleaning app that comes with a launcher, and the default launcher has a whiff of iOS about it, although that can be easily changed. 360 launcher is another one of those launchers that tries to automatically sort your apps too, which it's not terribly accurate at, and I've decided now that this just confuses users who probably want to sort their own apps out anyway. Now onto the good stuff. Pull this cord on the home screen and that automatically changes the background, which is just wonderful. There's also an awesome page transition called Snake, which when slowed down, looks like this. Oh yeah. Those two features alone I would happily steal and use for my own mega Android launcher if I ever decided to build one to rule the world. And while I wouldn't steal this T9 quick app search that's accessed with a double tap, it's nice to see an old school throwback to the days when you could type damn fast with just a number keypad. There's more nice touches too like the ability to change the grid size of your home screen up to a maximum of 6x6. Not quite as flexible as Nova Launcher, but it's nice to have. Like TSF Launcher, you can apply different themes too, if you can get past the language barrier. There's nothing necessarily wrong with 360 Launcher, as I say there's a few features I'd hand pick, 
but as a complete launcher, it doesn't feel as comprehensive as TSF Launcher, as unique as Z Launcher, or as good as something like Nova Launcher. Essentially, it's a launcher of all trades, but a master of no, what the hell have I just done to my launcher? Ugh. Bovich Rahim used a lot of words, but the only two I'm interested in are Yahoo Aviate. So let's get that straight then, an Android launcher from Yahoo. What? Who's next? Alta Vista? Look that one up on Wikipedia, kids. The first thing I'll say about Aviate Launcher is that it has a very good tutorial to ease you into the launcher. It lets you pick your most used apps and categories, which unfortunately I couldn't recall because it only lets you do it once even if you uninstall the app, and then it offers you some lovely wallpapers. Then, through a series of visual prompts, it shows you where to find automatically sorted app categories. You can add more categories that contain apps Aviate thinks should go in there, but it is pretty easy to delete them again with a long press. As you already know, I'm a little sceptical of these auto-sorted folders, so if you swipe left again, you'll hit the alphabetized app screen of everything you have on your device. If you scroll down the right-hand side of the screen, you can quickly move through all your apps, so it becomes intuitive in short order. The hand-holding continues, as Aviate will then show you to swipe right from the main home screen to hit its version of Google Now, a series of cards that give you different information such as weather, upcoming events, points of interest in your location, news, and so on. And that's pretty much Aviate, a fairly simple launcher that teaches you how to use it in about 60 seconds, which is something that can be overlooked. The main home screen does allow you to put widgets on it, although the desktop can be a little weird. This 4x1 weather widget that has nothing to do with Aviate completely takes up the whole screen until you manually adjust it to whatever size you want as it doesn't snap to a grid, which can be a little cumbersome. You can also set up different locations such as work and home so that the launcher adapts to them and shows you different apps, but does anyone really use that? I don't think I ever would. I like my home screens to stay consistent so I know where everything is. As for using Aviate as my default launcher, just once please. As always, thanks for watching and let us know what you think of the launchers we've covered today and which ones we should cover in the future. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to us if you want to watch more of me embarrassing myself. And because you've managed to get through my sporting inadequacies, here's a bonus. Remember the best app I ever reviewed from last episode, Mr. Phone? Well, would you believe it, it's only got its own Easter egg. Simply bring the left hand menu up, go to the Contact Us section and long press in the blank space and lo and behold you have Mr. Phone's own version of the infamous Flappy Bird's Android Lollipop minigame. In case you don't know what that is, you have to delicately tap your object through very narrow gates and it's extremely hard. So have a crack and let us know what your high score is. Mine is two, because I'm rubbish, have no patience, and I swear to God I'm going to...